Get started and call this meeting to order. Thank you for everybody for joining this afternoon. Uh, the storm is coming up, but hopefully it will hold off until we finish. Um, I'm going to shop. You want to open up this word of prayer? Father, we come into your presence this evening. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and your faithfulness to us. We ask and pray as we go about doing business for the city and human relations committee. You give wisdom, direction, and insight. You say you were if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. So we ask and pray you give us wisdom for this now. We pray these and all things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Right. Any questions regarding those, even though we cannot approve them at this moment? I do have a question, Archie. Yes. Um, last meeting, we didn't have a quorum either, did we? Uh, correct. So, have we looked at possibly doing virtual as well as in person? Because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we have the <coughs> audio equipment to do that, right? So why not utilize that? There may be people who may not be able to attend, but can't do a virtual. Very good point, yeah. And and as of lately, within this probably the last month or two or so, we have secured all that equipment. So that's definitely something we can get started up when we really reconvene to meet with that. That's right. To, uh, make some adjustments, but it's a very good point. And also, we would probably to even do it to have that combination of an in-person and a virtual meeting. We would more than likely move back to the committee room, but that's currently set up for that. Okay. Okay. Next on the agenda, um, the main reason, the main topic of Today we want to talk about, um, you know, we left off at the last meeting, there was a lot of conversation, a very good conversation, about what the commission could do uh, to assist uh, not only the police department, the community, um, and to look at some, some things to help prevent or decrease the recent increase in criminal activity that we experienced last month. So that conversation was we had a very good conversation last month, and we went away with a couple of things uh, to kind of follow up on. Directly after that meeting, uh, I was in uh, joining the chief and his staff with a couple of meetings, and they met weekly on um, trying to come up with something. I guess there's some long-term game plan and some short-term. But one of the issues that came out of our discussion was the resources or the lack of resources that may exist in the community for those individuals that were involved in some of that activity. And so as that conversation went on, uh, there was a part of the main stretches of the conversation that the chief and his staff had as well. And so uh, that led into a potential project. Uh, and I will let the chief come up and talk about that. He will also uh, share with you um, the desired involvement of this group to support that to support that event as well. So, Chief, at this time, I will turn it over. Thank you, uh, Mr. Archie. Um, I know in our last meeting, our full last meeting, there was a lot of questions on what is it that the Human Relations Commission can do. What are the needs of the community? We had those questions. And in many meetings I've been to, similar to yours, whether it's other community groups, together, separate, the same kind of questions come up. So after that meeting, um, we know that many times it feels like some of the instances we had about our city is dealing with the young. Um, I'm not gonna 
would say it's our juvenile for this young from teenage years up into their twenties. So we want to try to figure out how can we identify those individuals who may be at risk uh, and get them connected with the resources that are already existing within the community because I think I don't think we have a shortage of conflict resolution programs, mentoring programs, domestic violence programs, programs to deal with um, help you with mental illness, addiction. There's not a scarcity of that. I just think we are having some, I don't know what it is, connecting the individuals who need the service to the service. So what um, we had, Mr. Arch and I have talked about um, after some meetings with staff is that we have identified a group of individuals who have already exhibited or have shown behaviors that they may be either already involved in a game or the path to join a game. And we want to be able to uh, invite these individuals to some kind of peace forum, uh, community forum, or a forum to talk about um, the consequences of our decisions. Our, our, this, the, the, the decisions that we make today have consequences today and long lasting life consequences. And how to do that, it can't be the chief one of the consequences, get arrested, go to jail. That's, that may be helpful for some, but I think we need to find an individual or speaker to come in who has lived experiences they can come talk to these young adults, teenage years up into their twenties, about their life experiences, the decisions they made, the, what were the consequences, how they maybe even overcome it, what could, what they could have went back and changed, and what it would be different. We speak to these young adults, and so we started meeting with a group of different community stakeholders. From, um, of course, Mr. Arch, we wanted to bring him into the meeting. We um, have juvenile justice, juvenile court counselors, probation and parole, the Y, the Boys and Girls Club. There's a, there's a couple of other groups that we've invited because we didn't want to try to develop this event by ourselves. And then from a couple of those meetings, I have a conversation who else I think we should have included or want to include, maybe even be this body here because Staff and I, one of the main things we want to do is we do this event and we're on the path to do it. We don't want it to come from the police department. I don't think any flyer or any advertisement says, right now, police department wants to do this, this forum for young adults, whatever we're going to title it. Because some people may not come if they know the police has anything to do with it. Um, we know there's some trust issues in some parts of our community. So we wanted to try to selects if we have to have an organization to push this event that's non-biased, non affiliated just a, 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 an entity or a body um, that can people typically look to when there's conflict and they need to be neutral and what other body is it in this group in this room. Um, so we, <laughs> Mr. Arch was gracious to come to those meetings and we want to invite you to our next meeting, any members who want to come to that meeting to hear the discussions about this event. More about the event. The first part will be a motivational speaker who has had life experiences to share. We're going to invite everyone that's on my list. I don't know if they still live in these addresses, but I will make sure staff has an invite, a letter, a flyer mailed to the address we have on file. The only thing we will not do is we'll not put that child or that young adult's name on the letter because we know people move. And we don't want to reveal someone's name to a new resident of a house or an apartment. But we will give them a personal invite. Then we will invite many other people in the community who wish or their parents, loved ones, or the person themselves feel they want to come, they can come. We'll find a neutral location within the city. We've kind of had some discussions with that. I think we kind of settled on one location, but we'll have more discussions on it. But that's the first part. We're going to invite those group of people with the public individual about life experiences. Hopefully it will reach somebody to make a change. The second part of that event is going to be a room full of community resources. You heard of career fair, we're going to call it a community resource fair. We're going to maybe some other catch name, but we want to have 
mental health programs. We want to have addiction programs. We want to have uh, those individuals who help you with expungements, help you with getting your license restored, mm -hmm. job placement, reentry programs. Any program that we think our community needs, we want to invite that community resource to this event in one room. So when these individuals leave one part of the event, they will transition to the second part of the event. And then we want to try to see, one, how many people come to the event. That's one metric we want to try. Then two, we want to know how many of those individuals who came to the event connected with the resource. And then somehow with those resource partners, how many individuals that came to your table possibly followed up with the actual guy that your program or sought, or sought some other additional services for them. So those are three metrics we were kind of looking at. And maybe they can break it down by age that we can measure if there's some level of success. Because um, like I said in the beginning, I do think there are a lot of great programs in our city. But I think we all are challenged with how can we connect that resource to that young man, that young lady in our city who needs it the most. Um, and I hope this is just the beginning step. It's not a solve all our issues. But I think it's the first step. And then some of the questions that we have in this room, what else do our community need? What are some of the causes that are causing this violence? We'll come up with a four or five question survey. Let's ask them, where are we falling short with them? Um, it can't be 20 questions, because if it's long <laughs> and really wordy, with a lot of big words, they're not going to fill it out. So we need to come up with a short survey with the right questions we want to ask that you need to know and encourage hopefully at that event in the second part for them to fill it out. We, want to, we already have one major company within our city who has been instrumental and very willing to want to par partner with us and sponsor this event. Um, and many individuals know the company. And they have what they, this initiative they call CARE. Cummings advocate for racial equity. That is their big initiative that they push nationally, not only nationally, but internationally. And they heard of this program and they want to help sponsor it. We've also had conversations with our chamber president. He also is supportive and wants to help partner the business community with us in this event. Because sometimes you have to encourage people to come yeah, hopefully the event will encourage parents to get their children there, or some grandmother or loved one will encourage some young adult to come there, but sometimes the food may encourage someone to come. Sometimes it's the prizes that may encourage someone to come. The opportunity they have an employer there may encourage someone to come, but we're going to try any and everywhere we can to encourage citizens, individuals in our community to be at this event for both parts. And then, of course, there'll be encouragement to win prizes, and of course, if you take the survey, ask those questions that we're trying to ask ourselves, which we may not answer alone. Hopefully those individuals will come, whether it's 100, whether it's 200. I want, I'm hoping for 200 or more. But if we get 50, I'm satisfied. Um, so that's kind of the event we were shooting for maybe June the 30th. But at the last meeting last Thursday, I felt, I, I somewhat felt we were rushing and I guess I felt the urgency in doing something now, um, but we need to take our time to do it right. We need to take time to advertise it correctly. Uh, and then we wanted to come here too. I know Mr. Archer and I have asked you, are you willing to want to be a part of this? Because I really need a, a very non-biased group of citizens in our community who have committed themselves to doing what they can for our city, and that's you, to be that face on the flyer to push out who's putting this event up. Well, someone's gonna ask who's putting this on for our city and our citizens. And it don't need to be the police department, it don't need to be one resource group over another resource group. Who represents everybody for that commission? This body in this room. And then we want your input at that meeting to make sure we're planning it correctly as well to offer your input and feedback to us. So I pushed it from June 30th into July to get you at the meeting if you want to attend to assisting us planning this event um, sometime in June, hopefully at the event center. Um, we're not worried about the funding because we got one big company already said that they are committed to help us put this on and we 
you got the business community that's going to also probably help us with it. Um, I'm open for any questions. I know that was kind of short and quick. Um, I'm not proposing this as a solve all our issues. Uh, I think one issue that we have in our city is we got to make sure we do whatever we can to connect these individuals to that service that they need. And this is just the first step in many. Not at this one. Would that come up in a previous meeting? It's, we are already looking at three, four hours for this. I think this will be the first meeting of other meetings. Um, we want to, we, we're incorporating the opportunity. To, one speaker we've already spoken to, we had a second speaker of you that had introduced to us that may be better, a better fit. We've seen their video. There will be opportunities for those in attendance to ask the speaker questions. We want a back and forth engagement. Um, so maybe 15, 20 minute, 30 minute most speaker speaking, but then maybe a 30 minute back and forth between the speaker and those in attendance. But I do think that can lead to maybe another event where we can have more targeted breakout sessions for individuals. Because after that first hour, we want to move to the resource back. We want to move them from the actual motivational part to connecting them with something. So not at this one, I don't want to take that. Um, but if we get into the planning room and we think that's something we could do, maybe when you move into the resource fair, if you really want to engage more with the speaker, we probably could have a separate room for that. If we feel that would be meaningful. But I also think we need to try to remember, the second part of this was to connect them to a service they may need. If they don't think they need any of that, then maybe that could be a great process. Um. There is a young man um, who actually has experienced being locked up. Um, he actually uh, spoke at our reentry program. He even has a book called Streetology. I would recommend that he be a part of it because he's experienced what it's like to be on the inside. And he's also, since he's been out, he's become an author, very powerful speaker. Um, and he's been, um, He's not someone who just wrote the book. He experienced what it was like to be incarcerated. So um, I'm not sure we might be getting information to, to help him to be a part of this. He is local um, and has, has a positive impact on the ones he's reached. It may be the same, but there was one of our um, partners at that last meeting. Mm -hmm. There was someone who wrote a book and he read a passage from the book. Okay. Um, he had a story to tell him, but it may be the same person. It may be the sure. same. So he was brought up, which kind of made me also say that's moving because the other speaker was from Fayetteville who um, thought at 13, life of crime, gangs, progressed up to drugs, trafficking, federal prison time, um, came out, I think he became an ordained minister, I think, um, and now he's running a kind of like a reentry or program for youth. And he has a big supporter supporting uh, the Department of Justice because he's done a lot of speaking engagements for them. Um, so that's who recommended this speaker to me. But at the last meeting, someone brought up the image I think you're talking about, and we think that may be the way we may proceed with this. But we're going to discuss that next week. Well, maybe tomorrow at four. We're going to next meeting tomorrow at four. Right? So tomorrow at four. And there's also a program called Scared Straight um, that's offered through. Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office, and they actually take the guys, the youth through that program, and it's scared straight, so they get to see what it's like to be inside. So that's a program that's in existence too. And this same young man, he also connected with that program, so he also works with them in that program as well. And that's just another example of having all the programs you have to offer. A parent may be sitting home trying to figure out how they're gonna help John or Sally Land. They're trying to figure out how to help their son, their daughter, their granddaughter, a cousin, someone, loved one, but they don't know where to go. They don't know who to call. And no matter the organization's best efforts in putting stuff out on social media, newspaper advertising, campus here and there, sometimes the connection to the one who needed it isn't, isn't happening. So this is a way for me to be targeted 
And the individual, and I have a long list of individuals on that list, ranging from in their teens up into their 30s, that have shown behaviors of gang involvement. And I'm saying I want to invite those individuals to such an event. Um, to try to make sure, one, they hear the message, and then the resource fair second, which can lead to another event later in this breakout session. They can do something with this or the other thing. Yeah, uh, Gina, I just want to get clarity on the target audience that you're looking for. Um, because if it is, if it's gang members, or is it gang members, or is it those that are being um, targeted for gangs, or a combination of both? A combination of all of it, because I say that to say this, the, when we had that spurt, spike in crime, I think many times the public immediately think all that crime is gangs. It's not. Right. The majority of that is not gangs. Domestic violence, the one last night, domestic violence, it's not gangs. It's conflict resolution, dealing with issues, managing things like that nature. Many of those other incidents that we saw the spike is decisions, consequences of your choices. Some of it is gangs. So it's a kind of a combination of different things, different ages. But if I had to put an age range, the teens to the mid-20s. But I, but everything we've seen over the last month or two is a combination of age ranges from teenagers to their 40s and 50s. Because my, my concern is this. That when it comes to gang members or kids that are interested in gangs or gang activity, I uh, I concur with you, agree with you. Um, it does not have it does not need to have the police name on it. However, those group of folk are not going to come through a letter of invitation. You're going to have to know them and have a relationship in order to get them at any event. Um, and so while it does not need to have a police name on it, it's going to have to have police involvement. And the reason why I say that is because um, I've been in countless meetings with gang members, uh, with law enforcement, that they trust. It's got to be, and, and, and trust is going to be a major factor. And so if they don't feel like they can trust, or if they don't feel safe, then they're not going to show up. I totally agree, Pastor. And, and the command, and this is the thing about gangs, the command is going to come from the top down as to who's going to show up or who's not going to show up. And so you gotta reach the top in order to get them here. Those that, now you're gonna get some folk that, you know, are, are, are tickling with it. But if you wanna get folk that are validated, then you're gonna have to, it's gonna be through relationship. We will be involved in this. I've already had meetings with gang members in the city. Yeah. Gang leaders. In this city, you don't know that. This is not your last name. I've already done that. I know that. And Gee, I've heard their challenges are we can't find jobs in this city. That's what they're telling me. And then they tell me that the job that they do get that pays a decent wage, they're having to drive an hour away to get there with no driver's license, an undependable car that may break down on them, and they're taking a chance that somebody's going to stop them to give them another ticket, they're going to call more headache and problems for them. They talk about their record, and when they're doing it for a job, that's all they see of them, is I got a felony, I got a past, and they tell them no after no after no after no, and then we sit back and we wonder why they're back in the street selling drugs, committing crime, 
get themselves back in the criminal justice system, and in the wake of all those bad decisions, there are indirect, there are victims that are getting victimized, and some of them killed. They want to know about me and those programs. They're asking me about that. And I have a packet in my office of everything they ask me about how to get expungements, how to get their driver's license restored, how to identify employers that hire individuals with a felony record, reentry programs, recreational activity. I was surprised about it. Recreational activity. They had children with them. They had children. And then we wonder where some of our kids get it. They're around members, they're already in gangs, but they see the gang life. And some of them feel pushed and forced into that same situation. So the meeting was productive. I got a lot of answers that I, I didn't know. I suspected, you know, it's about informant, making a decent wage. Um, so it was helpful for me to hear from them directly and then what I'm looking at is I see girlfriends that was there, and I see those children. Um, so we talked about influence and the influence they have with others. They didn't believe they had it. I don't know that. That's what they were kind of telling. But they have the influence over other individuals. So we have other meeting coming, and we talked about they need to have, use the influence to have over the younger ones to come to events like this. And they were willing to have that conversation to do that. So, yes, we will be involved. Law enforcement is looked at, I think sometimes, as that fix all, everything, and all answers, and we don't. Um, so we will be involved in this program, but we're still doing the other things on the back <coughs> end, the enforcement piece of it, the suppression. We're doing that. I got the census to prove it. But we got to do more when it comes to pushing forth the programs in our community that are some of the underlying causes of why they're doing these crimes. We're not going to fix it all. It ain't all going to be fixed overnight because we didn't get where we are today overnight. Um, but I do know from experience, having the police in the forefront is going to scare many people away. Um, and I have the people, members of the Hispanic community and a group of pastors for the Hispanic community who met with me in my previous jurisdiction. And they said, Chief, we need to do a better job and build a strong relationship with the police and our children in the Hispanic community, and we need your help to do that. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do? We want to do a community activity with the kids. I said, you know what? I just had some community activity with kids, and my people get discouraged when only five or six or 10 people show up, and we worked hard to get the flyers together. We got all the food, all the prizes. Advertise me walking and knock on doors, and not many kids came. They said, well, Chief, have you ever thought, why do you have to have your name on it? Why do we have to say the Leesville Police Department on it? Can we, if you give us a flyer, put our name on it, you will be there, dressed down a little bit, and you will interact with the kids. That was one of the most successful youth programs we had at the Recreation Center. And they took the lead, but we did a lot of back end. So I was hoping from an experience of a program that we don't take the lead on this, put our name all up there, Big Print Rock Man Police, or put someone else on it, who I know this, that we all on the same goal and mission to do something for our community, the Human Relations Commission, but then we'll be on the back end helping working with these individuals too, as hard as we can, to show them that it's not all about locking you up, putting you in jail. It's also about getting you the help you need to prevent you from continuing to be in the criminal justice system. Uh, so you're right, Pastor, that we need to do, uh, we need to have a hand in it, but I think sometimes we need to take a side step and back and not mention it before, at least not for this event, I don't think. I'm going to kind of add to that, the conversation was about what it costs. I want to say, I'm sorry, Pastor, I know you, you know, I'm sorry, I, I forget my mind. It's not that I'm forgetful, it's just I got a lot going through my mind at times. 
some of those individuals on my list are not gang members. I want to be clear about that. Um, I can't, an individual can't cut his right arm off in the morning, cut his brother off, his sister off, his mom or dad. And hanging around individuals who are on the gang list, a private gang member, puts you on that appropriate list. But they are guilty by association, all because their sister or their brother is a gang member. Some of them wearing colors, gang markings, tattoos, they verbally admit things they put out on social media, a host of reasons why you get on the list. They just haven't met the standard or met all factors to be validated yet. So I go into this with, just because they're on my list don't mean they're a gang member. It's just that somewhere along some period of time, something has been displayed that got them on the list. I typically don't talk about that list a lot, but I have to start somewhere and being targeted and who I invite to the event. But we also publicly put it out there. This is an opportunity for any parent, loved one, or individual who is seeking help to come. Yeah. Um, I have a question. It sounds like also they're not being able to you know, find employment, so they join the gang. So would this form also help them with seeking employment, how to fill out applications, how to dress as being a film, in a village, what to say when they're in a, in a village? Some reentry programs do that. I have worked with Plaza Reentry in Rockingham County. They help them build resumes, they got some training, they get some certain skills before they're even connected to an employer. There's, okay. there's a, there's a period of time they have to go through some things. And then once they complete that, then Project Reentry connects them with an employee willing to hire them. It's an agreement they have. Then so, there's companies that will hire yes. felons. Mm -hmm. And they know which ones, they know what do they need to have. Um, they may have to go back to school. It may be, it, you know, there is a um, high school diploma or a GED. This is a hybrid event, let's call it that. It's not one particular age group, it's not one particular issue, it's a multi-facet of issues, individuals, and their whatever the problems they may have in one location. That's why in the resource part of this, you're gonna have hopefully reentry programs, maybe even some people looking to hire, and then community resources, that I done talk about most of those all in one big room and you will be able to go out there as an individual or a family or whatever group you're with and go to any table you want. And to motivate them, we, uh, one idea was to give them a card and every location they go, they listen, they get the materials, maybe some kind of marker, put them in for another drawing. Um, we, we're just brainstorming with you and your part of that, how to, one, get them there, then get them to stay for the, the resource connection, second part, and then measure any success we can measure. You said something now, those same individuals I talked to, many of them have a GED. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Uh, so how to get your GED, that's a GED program, was in my packet. And they asked for, because they know it's hard to get employment, they want to know more about getting a trade or skill, and I talked about plumbers, certified electricians, welding, heat and air repair. There's programs at our community colleges, both. And I put that in there. Uh, that they can go a short period of time and I insist, I want to tell them it's a three month certification program, six months, because they want to go up front, how much am I have to commit? But I told them you have to be willing to commit your time to do it. <clears throat> but I want to make sure they knew if it was a three month commitment, six month commitment to get this certification. Um, so I put that also in the, in the packet to give them at my next meeting. But they talked about getting the finish of the GED. One was on like two passes away. He was 22 years old, um, but he just stopped going. But he asked a question about that. Some didn't have it all, and others asked about getting a certification or trade. So we will have those groups there hopefully also at this meeting. What about Yeah, I, I just for clarity, because a lot of great information, 
Um, but I think the initial offset for this was to try to find someone, some group to sort of oversee or take the leadership in this project and you're looking for the human relations group to possibly do that or put their, because you said you do not want the law enforcement, and I, and I agree with that. Because we, we came up, some, I don't know if it was this group, somewhere that it came up that we had a discussion, we need to have this type of event. But then I said, I don't want to have our name on, so we got a group of stakeholders together. And then in that meeting also was said, we don't know if it needs to be one community group over another. Um, and I named a group of groups that was there because we don't want to feel like, well, this particular group is there then. So we try to think of what other organization that could be somewhat all inclusive, which was this. And it's not necessarily that you have to have your name on the flyer, but someone's going to ask, well, who's sponsoring this? If the question's asked, who would we say? And we, I thought, it don't need to be rocking out police, because we could just put out flyers and advertising. We're talking about putting out static boards you see around the city, a lot of advertising, you know, push to push this out there, but then eventually someone was like, who was sponsoring the event? And we just was figuring we need to find a name, and that's where we came here. So it seems to me, this is, you've already started the program. So you're not, you're looking at putting the initial planning session together to orchestrate how you want to we've had roll this out we've had four meetings already so you so we've done some planning so from the initial one over here you got phases phase one you said i think 6 30 is your initial setup or startup for the planning session six six the time start yeah time. they no, it was 6 30. June 30th was the initial, it was, I think it's a Thursday from 5 30 to 8 30 was the time frame at the event center. So, was that the initial startup or planning that session? That was when the event was supposed to happen. But it sounds good, it's already happened. No. Kept the feeling of like, uh, I think I know where you're going. Right. So, as they, when this uh, as a result, it was not as a result, but some things that happened after this last year. Mm -hmm. now, and I've been in other but uh, the police department, we call them the contact they have had also, start to brainstorm what can we do as a kind of short term goal project on the long term. You, you even know that came out of this meeting, some of the things that were said is that there was a lack of resources and there was a mental health issue. And we named like five major things that we saw. And, and the chief said he would be committed to come back and bring some information on that. And so, Based on the information that the discussion that we had, in conjunction with the conversation that the chief and executive committee had with all those other community partners, they have already, like I think, we've had three, three or four meetings. And so the concept is to have a resource fair, right? To get these resources, but also there's got to be a draw to it. There's got to be want to have somebody that can give a present uh, a a message to those individuals that can relate to that, but also in the process have a benefit of something that's going to make those individuals come. Now, there was some conversation about should we uh, say gang chief uh, covered that. Everybody on this list is not a gang. That's right. But there are some at risk youth and adults in the community that for some reason have come to a crisis and they have not been connected or no one has been there to kept them come out of it. And hopefully doing this event here will be something that will connect them with that. Now one thing that as a commission that we hope to come out of it is that there will be some things that we can identify that we can follow as, as, as well. All those partners around that table are committed um, because just this event is not going to be a solve all thing, but hopefully it will lead us and identify some things that the community and the city need to do to fit fill in those gaps. The reason I asked that question because we got commissioned, this group did, mm -hmm. by this group up here that's right. to, do, to do that. So it goes hand in hand. That's right. Exactly. So that's exactly what we were looking at doing. Yeah. And the chief was saying he was looking for somebody other than the Rocky Mount PD to sort of say, hey, this is from the, you know, we're driving, driving this process. 
There was a lot of great concepts that came out of there. Community college, we got two great community colleges just in this area. We got businesses such as the community, um, Rocky Mount um, Cummings with, um, with the folks over there, they do real good work. And um, I think if we could talk about that next phase, because you know, you got phase one already, the scope of the project that we're looking at trying to do, we're looking at trying to do, and just document that information and then look at how you're faring against that scope and what are the people that you can bring in. Because I'm thinking about, we talk about mental health, mental health professionals that come in to be a part of that team as well. We're talking about educators, because I'm, t I'm going to tell you, it ain't just games, because it starts from elementary school. The so kids in like elementary schools is coming into this, th right. this phase as well. So it sounds like you were in support of this. A absolutely. A absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair, Mr. Jones, we already have a list of resources yeah. that some have already committed to come. So you already got that that's coming, from done. We already got quotes from the event center where it's going to call for the food for two, up to 250 people. We already got that already set. That's what I'm saying. You we already got one major sponsor who I've met with their international VP, two VPs for Cummings, who have shown, put their full support in their care initiatives behind it. I already know we have some support from our business, um, our Chamber of Commerce, Sheridan and Mr. Ferris, who we're gonna be looking to go to our business community to help us either in kind prizes we can give away, we do raffling, whatever to motivate them to come and offset any other costs we may have. Um, we got a group of partners from juvenile services, court counsel, probation, parole, social services, mentoring with Boys and Girls Club, the Y. We want to eventually want to get our chaplain in there. We want the faith community involved, and then we really wanted you involved because we felt like, like you said, I think we're all on the same path or the same thing. And I just, at some point, we thought this would be the perfect pairing for this group to kind of take the lead on this first event, the first of hopefully others, and then to answer that question that we all have, what is it that our community need? What are some of the underlying causes of some of this problem? And hopefully that survey will reveal something like the game members revealed to me what they felt their needs were. Those of you who take that survey, they give you something you didn't know. Then you can go back to people and say, well, we did a survey and a hundred people took it, and this is what they say. I, I love this concept too because basically, and I, I can't speak for the group, but I like to get our school system engaged in that process. I got a man that I would actually get him actually working with you because he handles student support. Because if you roll this out well enough, it's going to impact our schools and the kids in our, inside our schools because we have a lot of concerns when it comes to uh, suspensions and long term and short terms and and dropouts and so I think it's a great idea. I know uh, even the housing authority is involved. I bet you said something made me think of Mr. Macklin's been coming to the meeting yeah. and they even thought about some of their summer programs and how they can, I think the time frame was doing when they were having some big camps and they want to have a field trip to get those campers to the event. So we're, we've engaged a lot of individuals, not everybody, uh, but we knew it couldn't be a, a Meaning of one, just the police. Right. Um, so that's why we try to invite multiple different people that can brainstorm how to shape this. And at some point, Mr. Jones, you know what? This may be something we need to get this Well, that's what I was going to say. If you uh, don't mind me back, Mr. Charles Henry, is somehow pulling in the school system um, when you're talking about at risk kids or kids that's on the borderline. Uh, if you want to reach those kids, the school system already have them, and they already have them targeted. So if you want to send uh, an invitation to those individual home, you're going to have a, probably a more up-to-date address uh, going through them that you can uh, make contact with those individuals. Mm -hmm. Got a question over here, Mr. Thomas? Mr. Jones, my question is, I understand what the chief is saying. I know the commission wanted to um, help out with this. With the other meetings, will you all, will you put together a committee from the Human Relations Commission and let them sit in on trying to help put this together? 
Is that something that's coming yeah, down the road? Sure. Mm -hmm. The committee? Okay. Because uh, before I may commit it to it, I want it, the chief to come to this meeting mm -hmm. so we can put it out there. And definitely, we need someone from this community to join me and myself and Jeffrey in, 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 in the future meetings. Correct. Mm -hmm. And nothing's in stone. And that was another big reason. We've done a lot of kind of leg work already. But just at that meeting, I sat there. We were committed to almost June 30th. But my, something in me just said, I think we're rushing. We know we need, we wanted you to be there to offer any other feedback or input. Um, and I just thought it was best at that last, I did not go into that meeting, plan on moving that date to July. But at the end of that meeting, I said, I think we need to move this. We, so can't, have it, we can't have it June. There is a meeting tomorrow, but we're going every Thursday at four. Is the meeting time. Thursdays at four over in the committee room. Um, but we don't have a date set. We decided to move it. Okay. Well, did, does that make sense? No, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and uh, just text message. Y'all don't know who knows Miss Big Pink. She's a, my community engagement coordinator. She's kind of my point person on this thing. Uh, she did say she will contact Dr. Bridges again. And there was a council, I think, from Nash County that was going to be coming. So they have tried to make contact with our school systems to get them involved. And offline, there is something we're having a conversation with another group okay. with our school like system. Like that, this have ready to forward that to me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, I will. And I'll make sure the right thing gets to you. Thank you. So with commission. Chairman, so that way we need to communicate with her meeting times. If we need to change that to fit the majority, we can also look at another time that we meet. But I will make sure she gets your information. In. So, do we have this document, the scope of this project, what we're trying to do? Is that documented someplace, or is just up here? I will share. I can. I don't know. And the reason being is because I like to see that document so I can forward on to my folks and say this is what we're looking okay. at. Give us Probably a after the meeting tomorrow. 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 I can do that. Okay. We'll, Thank we'll, we'll, you. Yeah. So, so with the commission uh, agreeing to, you know, to play uh, a very important part of it, does this mean that they would take a lead as far as the majority of advertising and promoting it, or is that a different discussion? Because the, the chief was saying he wants to know as far as like what's going to be on the flyers. People will want to know who, who's sponsoring. I can see that is that uh, as we're doing those meetings, we will be a part of that conversation. Um, so you all have a communication person, uh, and then in conjunction with the, with the civic uh, staff, will pretty much handle that. Uh, but as far as the, the feedback and input into that, um, yes. Yeah, well, uh, the marketing team has already got us a draft flyer already made up for the event. We just got to tweak the verbiage. We've already realized that, so it's already been done. Uh, they've given us priority on that. We've already talked about static boards, those white boards you see at the parks and major intersections, using some of those for this. We've talked about radio advertisement. We've talked about social media blasts. We've talked about our faith community getting out to the secretary of the church for announcement, or maybe send the flyers in the hand. We've talked about a lot of that stuff already. Look at it with the commission, look at that. We're, I got staff already that that's their job. Mm -hmm. This is Mr. Yolanda's full-time job, by the way. This isn't a part-time job for her. This is her full-time job for the police department. You already got that commitment. You already got marketing helping us out with commitments. We just need, I guess, direction. Correct. Someone to take the lead, sir, and not us, but we're going to do the work. We just tell us where you need us, what we need to do, how we need to shape it. And I think that's what the issue is going to decide when we come together, correct? Thank you. Can I have one more thing? I'm yeah. sorry. I, I'd be
you to shake this up a little bit. So I did come all those dots you see. It's six months of mental health calls that I've seen. That's mental health calls. It's a lot of dots. That is from December 7th to June 7th. That's a lot of dots. So when I was telling you that eventually we find what our needs are, underlying causes, I said this to other groups, if I have a group that they focus on mental health services, then I'm going to talk with them about where I can tell you what parts of our city we're seeing the biggest need right. for mental health services. Mm -hmm. You will always push your services out citywide to anyone who needs it. But if you're looking boots on the ground to target neighborhoods where it's happening, I can help you focus in on where it's happening. And I tell you, so that's the resource that we have. And I have a second prime analyst on my team Monday. We have a wealth of experience coming from Chicago who's going to be on my team with my other experienced prime analyst to help make sure we provide that data to the groups that need that data to help them get the services to the individuals who need it in our city. I think that's my role because it's expected by a big portion. Suppression, deal with the crime chief, and I'm going to do that. But I also have a role to make sure that I support, if I can, within my scope. If I know where the issues are happen happening, tell this group, this is where I see it happening. So whatever sources and people you can do to put there, put it there. Because that's going to make my job easier, hopefully, down the road. Absolutely. Yes, sir. What I want to do is I'm going to fine-tune this, put it in a heat map, and I can blow it up big. I got printers to put it up this big. So one meeting we may want to put it up just to have some discussion of where some issues are in our city. Because again, it's all about when I get to a call and the person going through the middle crisis, it's already heightened level. My guys got the training on identifying it, but they're not trained in psychiatrists. We do the best we can to try to de-escalate the situation to hopefully then get them to the resource they need in our city. Um, so I get this data and I'm willing to share and work with groups like you and others to show you where our problems are in our city and how we can make it better. That's some good information because I, I can just like guarantee that uh, in some of those locations, those heavy locations, we have some heavy issues that. I can imagine, I'm looking at this and you see the same that. thing on the. When you see the heat map, it goes from Green, yellow, purple, red to white. White is your center of where the majority of those crimes or incidents are happening in our city. When you see it in the form of a heat map, it will give you better at a depiction. If you had to pick a neighborhood, mm. where is it happening? And that's how we look at it. We look at relocating resources, manpower, our task force and teams. We look at heat maps. Sometimes I call them focus maps. Um, I don't call them crime maps. Sometimes we have to be just straightforward. They're crime map, incident maps, same thing, just different titles. But I can tell you where it's happening based off a tight call or incident. I'm even trying to develop one where we're getting complaints with homelessness, and there are groups we work with to try to connect homeless individuals with services, get them housing. Um, so we're trying to run that data as well. So if you ask me something, if I can do it, my teams will try to do it. We're working on that. I'm hoping to fine tune the future meeting, give you something big to look at just to open up discussion. Awesome. Good information. Thank you. Right. Were there any other um, concerns or items from the commission? Sweet states have been closed. Um, were a lot of crimes 
the cause of the sweets of the, for the um, sweet state being open, contributing to the crimes. Because I understand in other counties they're still open. So was this city targeted, and were they a contributor to the crime? Uh, I worked somewhere, and it was it was chiefs, all law enforcement executives in one room, and someone said. All the violent crime is happening at Sweet States. Hmm. I didn't say that to him. I like to go look first. So I went back to my crime now and said, let me report from where the majority of violent crime occurred. The next thing I said, look, I told the whole group, before you get on that TV screen and you say that, this was another jurisdiction, so this is not us. I, I promise you it's another jurisdiction. We better be right, but in my city, the majority of violent crime is in that those three states. You have you have just as many robberies at convenience stores, so we shut down convenience stores. No, we're not. We have just as many other places. And I said, I challenge you to have your crime team, crime analysts, to do the same. They come out and chief has to let me say something. Because we didn't see that support data either. So when we did our press conference, we didn't say that. But do we have violent crime? Do we have robbers? Do we get a shot? Yes, we do. I'm trying to run the numbers. I don't know what that is yet. Um, to sit here and say we have more violent crime at Sweet States. But what I can tell you, that it's not just Rocky Mount. It's not just one jurisdiction. It's a tri-county um, initiative. All jurisdictions are by to the meeting, so everyone is working this. I have sent out letters um, to my jurisdiction, that my officers, that we serve our citizens in Rocky Mount too, and all but one have closed, as you said. But there may be other we may have missed, but the majority of the ones we serve are closed. Now, but we serve those letters, it's not just us. Um, I can't say which other jurisdiction did it, but I know it was a joint meeting, so I can't, I can't say who served theirs are, but we have served ours. And we are looking at those and starting the investigation. Sorry, I'm asking you for that other. So they were closed. Why were they many, closed? Many of the ones, they got a letter saying that we're going to investigate. If you have illegal machines, then you need to shut down. <laughs> or you need to stop. If you, have, if you have illegal machines, but you need to consult your attorneys, we're going to investigate. And those are illegal to operate in this state. They're going to be, we're going to deal with it. And many of those did shut down. And that was the result of a recent Yeah, the recent change in your clarification. Um, now, of course, made a decision to identify what's illegal, so we're going to enforce the law. Um, so. Thank you. Good question. All right, just to wrap up things, things I want to share with you. Um, city Council meeting is coming up Monday. Uh, the council will approve the 2023 budget, uh, so we got it all worked out. And so uh, we'll, be, we'll be moving forward with that on, on Monday night. Also, to give you an update, Public Works continues to make progress on garbage collection. We went through a situation where they delayed um, days in collecting garbage. garbage. Um, last report is that uh, they're just about back fully staffed. So that's good. Um, Skins trying to get back on normal. And they are also working on um, some need equipment as well. So uh, hopefully you're seeing a big change Process con the process continues with the units of facilitary, uh, identifying a lot of uh, unknown graves. Um, we should receive some of it. They should leak some information out pretty soon about the progress that has been made. But there were a number, and still is a number of uh, graves at that, lo at that um, location um, that no one knew who they were. And so it's very important to try to capture that. And that's one of the things that's really been involved in that, in that process. It's one thing to just go out and clean it up, but then you don't know who, 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 who's out there. Um, other thing, tomorrow morning at 9, that will, tomorrow morning at 10, there will be a um, groundbreaking ceremony for the Five Points Housing Project uh, located on um, a couple of years ago. <coughs> That's a workforce housing unit, the same developer that built the 
Raven Wood Crossing down in South Rocky Mountain, also doing DOD also. This should be 60 units because they're mm -hmm. going to cross from uh, Cobbler. But again, it's workforce housing. It's from Frank Daniel? Yeah, it's from Daniel, yes. Uh, last thing, hopefully everyone uh, who had an interest in the uh, possible student UD merger was able to take part in the survey that was sent out um, because that conversation is still going on and uh, hopefully everyone was able to share their feedback as well. Any other thing? Any, any, is that all right? Staff, you over there? Mr. Chair, before you close out, yes. can I speak from the public comments? Sure. Okay. Uh, you're talking about the uh, the merger. The kind of commission met this past week, okay. and they're going to have a public hearing so people can come in and voice their opinion. So I think that's going to be that's key. For, they, I, don't, I, I don't know, but they, they haven't, I don't think they said it. They, but they, they might have said it after the meeting that night okay. when they went in closed session. I don't know. But that's coming up a public hearing. But I, I had some things. Um, being um, a life member of the Rocky Mountain NAACP since 1992, um, some concerns with um, from me and, and other folk that I represent that allow me to speak for them. Um, when it comes to individual cases, when it comes to crimes, shootings, or whatever, I um, hope we're looking at individual cases and see how it began and how it ended and what went wrong and how, you know, what, what, what the final analysis should be uh, dealing with that particular crime because I hear a all, whole lot of things and they are not the same. Like I said, some in gangs and some are not. So I think when we start looking at individual cases, amongst all the other stuff that you're doing, I ain't saying you, you got to do uh, both ends, but I want to hear more about that. Um, example, the most recent shooting, I mean, one last night, you know, I would love to know what created that. What what happened? Why it didn't it end up to that? And how you're gonna deal with it? Go. Um, and at the last in relation to me, I didn't say anything. You know, I love to talk at the end of the meeting, but I didn't. But it was brought up about hiring felons without a background check. Now I've been working on my job for 35 years, mm -hmm. and hey, I want them to do that background check. Now if they want to hire them and bring them in, that's fine. But I need to know who I'm working with, okay. you know, and I know they ain't going to make it public, but at least they'll know. I need to know if somebody coming in that, that's been shooting up people because they can come in my job and shoot me up. So, I, I mean, there's no background check now. I got a problem with that. So I, I hope that, that ain't, you know, one of the things going on. You know people got, 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 got a background, but it's up to you whether you hire them or not. Okay, um, homes. For me, it all started at the homes. And I know what's going on in my house. I, I got a 24-year-old son. I just told him yesterday he worked. He worked. I told him, I need to know your work schedule every week. He, he, why you need to know? I know. You, work, you live with me. I need to know your work schedule. You got a problem with that, then you need to move out. He's a good kid. Uh, very proud of him. He got my last name, so I know he ain't going to mess that up. But, um, you know, it starts at the home. We know what's going on in our home. And so if you're allowing it, then you are part of the cause. So until we put more focus on the home, uh, how do they get involved? Um, how do you get those targeted to commit to ongoing sessions? You're talking about having um, all the stuff he presented, mm -hmm. but how are you going to get them to commit to ongoing sessions? Because a lot of times you have one session and then it goes away. So it's got to be ongoing. I don't been to too many meetings. And, um, and then I, I, I didn't hear any mention about the DA office. I don't know what they need to be involved. But so many times the police do their job, but they're right back out on the street. And so they get the flack because it looks like they are the ones, but they, they, they do what they do, and then the DA do what they do. So I, don't, I, I haven't heard where they fit in, where they be a part. Um, sweet states. Um, your question. Uh, yeah, and, and that came down from the state. It's going to count. It's been shut down now. But um, like I said, I just I, and, and I don't want no answers tonight. We want you to shut the meeting down when I get to talking. This is just for for information. But we gotta look at this stuff individually and see 
uh, um, you know, that get to the, the root cause and the final analysis. Cause we keep, for me, we keep going all around and the crime keep going and I don't hear anything about what actually happened to rectify what took place. Oh, I'm done. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Thank you, sir. With that said, uh, we'll adjourn. Thank you. Um,